Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, welcome to another very important lecture that is uh, topic is safety function deployment. So, what is safety function deployment, how it is to be applied in industrial situation and the different steps and finally, the uh, design solutions interventions uh, and in uh, finding out interventions for safety improvement will be discussed. So, see the contents first we will introduce the SFD that is safety function deployment and then uh, the steps to be followed to do it and we will give one example uh, the desulphurizing plant and then the design principles particularly with reference to the hazard control hierarchy 9 principles what we have discussed earlier those will be uh, considered here and then using the this concept and finally, how we will find out the different interventions which we are telling the design solutions and that will be discussed. So, it is a little bit lengthy one. So, I am expecting that 45 minutes of time uh, I will be able to complete it. So, what is safety function deployment? Safety function deployment is a planning tool, it is a planning tool that focuses on designing safety into system by incorporating stakeholder concerns about safety and principles of safety by design. Okay. So, please understand it is a planning tool that means, this will help you in doing what it will do, it will help you in doing pin safety by design and here by safety by design means safety by design and redesign that is what we are basically trying to say and what it consider? It considers stakeholders concerns about safety and the objective is identification of alternative design solutions for improving work system safety or other way we can say that system safety. Here system is maybe work system, uh, maybe your uh, product or maybe your that will be workplace where you are working, but it is a system. So, the concept what we have uh, borrowed uh, that is QFD quality function deployment basically uh, we have you know that quality function deployment is a very very uh, important topic in quality engineering the sole purpose is there that how to design quality into the product through QFD. So, uh, what I have done particularly while developing the safety function deployment. I have taken the concept of QFD into consideration, but not in 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 one to one or ditto manner. Here, here we have utilized the risk hazard identification and risk assessment techniques. We have utilized the principle that is hazard control hierarchy, and we have also utilized that whatever tools and techniques you have learned so far. So one way or other, they can be used. Uh, in, in, in this concept. So, I am not interested to explain you what is QFD, but for the timing let me tell you that QFD is a known for quality function deployment which is a tool that is used to design quality in the product that you are going to produce. So, the detail of quality function deployment can be available, it is available in many standard textbooks you may go through it. But this concept I have applied in developing safety function deployment and our primary purpose here is like in QFD design quality into product here also design safety into the system where people will be working. Okay. 
so i request all of you to go through qfd because that will give you some more insights what we have developed here but nevertheless this is self sufficient and you will be able to understand so <coughs> first let us explain the steps so while explaining the steps i will try to relate to the previous lectures or the topics what we have covered but uh, but uh, for the time being you just think that if you are not getting all the steps together definitely after the end of the class all those steps will be most of the steps will be clear to you and in maybe in the subsequent class also some more steps will be clear to you but this is a very very important topic particularly from blueprint for safety by design point of view so our step is determine stakeholder concerns about safety so who are the stakeholders everybody involved in in the, in in the in the warp the system like the workers or employees the management the union the supplier everybody who was basically one way or other connected with the system their stakeholders so what is their concern concern in qfd terminology that is what but in our terminology these are nothing but the accident scenarios so determine stakeholder concern about safety that is what's what is the being in suppose you are the worker or you are the you are the that is supervisor there what will be your concern definitely you don't want that there will be any accident no accident scenario is permitted so that is your concern then estimate the important rating of what means what important rating of accident scenario so you have seen the risk assessment so every accident scenario has a risk so that is the importance then benchmark wards with similar work systems so for a particular uh, accident scenario for example suppose fire is one impact uh, accident scenario so now you see that what is the risk of that uh, that fire occurring in your system then you, you have similar work system in your organization or maybe in other organization now you check that what is the risk for fire on that organization suppose 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 there is the that there there is the emission of gas into the work environment so in your system what is the risk of emission maybe in similar other work system what is the risk of emission so then that is the that you can compare and find out the best uh, best managed uh, work system that is will be the benchmark so what is the need need is benchmarking why because you know that whether your risk is the lowest one or it can be reduced further then find out what with unacceptable risk using alap principles we have discussed alap there will be acceptable zone tolerable zone unacceptable zone so you 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 should find out what are the accident scenarios whose risk is under unacceptable zone so those things are must be action must be taken immediately so you find out those also find out some which are under tolerable zone then identify design features and preventive measure these are basically how what do you mean so i know what what is accident what is means here accident scenarios i know what is the risk of every accident scenario now i have already prioritized with benchmark system whether my the risk of my accident scenarios or my systems are more or it is the lowest level or it can be reduced then you have used another principle called alarp using alarp what you were saying that uh, that whether the unacceptable risk uh, accident scenario is there or not then what you required to do you required to reduce the risk how do you reduce the risk that is basically how what is how in 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 our case what are the design feature and preventive measures that you should incorporate into your system so that the risk level will be going down then that is means identify design solutions then for each what find out the deployment of house so about you know okay there are uh, there are nine design features design principles starting from avoid uh, hazards to last one is the modify the quality of hazard so you have to know how many principles are applicable and now using those principle how can you find out the design solution that will be that is house so 
what is equivalent to accident scenario and how is equivalent to design solution. So, so ultimately using our this approach you may find out some solution and it may so happen that better solutions are available in other system. So, that is why whether your, your, your solution is the best one or not that why you require to know the benchmark house with other similar work system and determine how much that means how much risk can be reduced. So, you have found out how you, you through deployment uh, that through SFD safety function deployment concept you found out some design solutions, but it may so happen that your design solution is inferior in the sense that the risk reduction that is possible based on your design solution is not that effective which is already available in some other benchmark work systems. So, that means after getting the house you have to you have to see that what is there in the benchmark. So, that comparison will help you in modifying the design solution and you can go for better design solution. Then what happened calculate the weighted score each of the design solution. It may so happen that for, for a particular scenario accident scenario or with back calculation for a particular hazard you will may have get different design solutions because you have 9 principles. So, you can use uh, 9 principles together you may find out a combination of principles will will give you one design solution another combination will get another design solution. So, now you may find out that the design solutions are effective and there are alternative uh, situations available alternative solutions available. So, in that case select the DSS to be incorporated in the work system based on score. So, that means you will select which one will be the best design solution that is to be that is to be chosen. So, then identify design and oper then for that particular solution identify the design and operating specifications it is a very much is engineering issue. So, that means the for that particular solution the, the, the concerned engineers will see that what will be the design and operating specification for it. Because when you incorporate any design solution what will happen ultimately it may bring new hazard at the same time it may create dependency also. So, there will be problem that is why the expert engineers or design engineers uh, and the operating people they will be com the combining together they will find out the design operating specification. First of all your, your that design solution may not be accepted by them when it is accepted what will be the design and operating specification for the DS DS that is to be identified then repeat repeat this for all other hazards ok. So, let me repeat again you will be having suppose m number of hazards this m number of hazards may lead to n number of accident scenarios for accident scenario is the concern it is basically what which is concerned for all the people stakeholders worker will not want the fire will be there supervisor will not want this management will not want this there should not be explosion, there should be not be fall from height. So, these are all accident scenarios and concern. So, that is what you do not you, you know the risk of every what means every accident scenario. So, you know whether the risk is acceptable or not acceptable. You can compare with similar work system and find out that what is the risk level there. So, these two helps you to understand that that what level of risk can be reduced. In order to reduce the risk, the risk of accident scenarios and in turn the risk related to hazards, what you require to do? You require to find out some preventive and mitigative measures, prevention and mitigation measures. So, this prevention and mitigation measures we are saying design solutions DS. So, how do identify the design solutions? What is to be adopted there? For that purpose, what you are doing? That purpose you are using hazard control hierarchy that 9 principles 9 P's what given in hazard control hierarchy. So, for every accident scenario and the resulting hazards you see that what hierarchy is applicable there and accordingly find out that which are the what is the best principle design principle that will be used. 
So, you also find out the alternative other design principle that can be used also. You find a set of design solutions. Okay. And then once you have a set of design solutions and if you find out a uh, the set in such a manner that there are multiple sets or multiple design solutions and which are if you assume that they are equivalent means any one of them lead uh, ultimately reduce the risk level to that extent for which it is needed and then you can choose the best one out of the out of the several alternatives. So, the best one selection like from 8 to 8 to 10 these steps we will be discussing in the in the next class, but this is to be done for all the hazards. Now, let us see one after another I will I will be little faster here because you see that the accident scenario and risk is, is nothing but uh, once you identify hazard then only you will be able to identify the accident scenarios and then uh, once you know the accident scenarios then you will find out the probabilities and get the risk of these things. So, that means hazard identification is included here, risk assessment is included here, risk prioritization with LRP is also included here and this hazard control hierarchy, energy control model is also included here and finally, combining all those things you are going, uh, going to get the design solutions, then ranking of design solutions is also included there. It is a very, it is a holistic one and it is really, a, a, I, I think it is a really a very, very useful one for um, safety engineers. Okay. So, very quickly I have to proceed, but why I will go for uh, go for quickly because you know hazard identification, you know risk assessment, you know the, uh, you know hazard energy control model and hazard control hierarchy also. So, what I have to do, how I am mapping the things that is what I have to explain it. So, that is what I am doing now. So, I will not explain it further. <coughs> So, it is basically stakeholders who are stakeholders and what are the voice of stakeholder accident scenarios and you have seen earlier that event tree is used to find out the accident scenarios given the center event or top event known. So, this center and top event will come from the hazards. <coughs> now, let us consider a case here. The case is, uh, it is basically a desulphurization unit where molten metal from the blast furnace this will come to that DS plant and then what happened this hot metal uh, will be will be basically treated with the help of calcium carbide, magnesium, CO and uh, all those inputs. The primary purpose is the sulphur content in the hot metal that is to be reduced. Okay. So, let us see that this is a schematic diagram for the hot metal. So, presence of sulphur that is the issue presence of sulphur particle in the hot metal causes cracks and pinholes in the finished products affect the ductility and toughness. Desulphurization involves submerged pneumatic injection of fine grained in reagents into the hot metal the carrier gas into mg vapor from a bubble plume like this. So, for the time being you understand that that from blast furnace hot metal is coming to the desulphurization unit purpose is reduce the sulphur content in the from the in the hot metal because sulphur content in hot metal is not good for the resulting products what you produce in a steel, steel melting shop or in a steel plant. Okay. So, what are the <coughs> what are the inputs? Inputs are this and this is the desulphurization unit where you see that magnesium silo, CAC2 silo and then ultimately there are different different carrying lines, nitrogen gas lines, CSU2 lines, so many things are there. Okay. So, all those ultimately for certain purpose it is there. So, all those ultimately are the hazard elements and there will be several initiating mechanisms and ultimately several threats can uh, will be will be will may be realized not will be may be realized. So, what is the output primary output hot metal with less sulphur content and this is the procedure once things come to the first one is hot metal will come to the DS station and at the DS station slag removal 
then you have to prepare the treatment plant calculate that is calculating the necessary compounds depending on the hot metal comp composition you have to find out the what are the inputs to be added there then injection process will start and ultimately desulfurization uh, the raking of ds the deep lensing will be uh, done and then ulti finally after that evaluation of this is means what is the final sulfur content and what are the other uh, other uh, that is uh, outputs like iron losses and uh, other things that is to be computed okay so this is this is not cell what is the system i am not going into the detail of the system because this is not required at present and and it is uh, it is basically a dissipation plant and uh, used in uh, primarily in the uh, steel making steel plant so what i want to do i want to show the sfd with reference to this plant so let us see what we will do now see that <coughs> our aim is here so what are the hazardous element you recall the uh, first few lectures so hazardous element is the nitrogen gas line conveying line induced drought magnesium silo these are the few things we have not we, we obviously hot metal is also hazardous element but from this point of view we are concentrating on uh, this uh, in the desulfurization unit what are the things are there hot metal is obviously it is there so what are the initiating mechanism moisture in nitrogen gas line that is that is in not, not desirable leakage of calcium carbide conveying line that is not desirable leakage of magnesium in conveying line pressurization in induced drop oxygen in magnesium silo these are the these are the few uh, initiating mechanisms and ultimately all those things lead to different kind of threats like process shutdown emission in work area environment low impact fire then bursting high impact fire so <coughs> let me just uh, repeat for for a minute this is our system what you required to do you required to find out all the hazards and you required to find out what are the initiative mechanisms that can take place and finally you required to find out what are the threats or the, that is means the accident scenario that could happen so here ultimately i have i have enlisted few hazards like na hazardous element few or the important initiating mechanisms and important accident scenarios by by giving these three i am not saying that the entirety is covered here from the hazards element hazard initiating mechanism and target third point of view but it is the most of the important things are covered okay so then what is the stakeholder concern here stakeholder concern is this box this box each stakeholder concern so they don't want this thing to happen suppose that mean you have to you have to know now that what is the risk of all these things happening okay so let us see how do we find out the risk of all those things happening so we have consider one of the hazard that night in nitrogen gas line that moisture in nitrogen gas line so this is our initiating mechanism that moisture in nitrogen gas line so what is the probability or frequency of moisture in nitrogen line gas that is to be estimated also so okay for the time being you say that moisture in nitrogen gas line and that is estimated because using fault tree you can have estimate this one then moisture analyzer n2 bypass line and temperature so so these are the sum of the basically protection thing so now what you will do if depending on the success and failure of this and the obviously that ignition source ignition source so then what are the situation one of the situation is process shutdown emission in work environment high impact fire emission in work environment high impact fire emission high impact fire okay so that mean high and low impact fire so that will be that will be there okay so so resultant this and then 
we knowing this probability this probability also or the frequency you know what are the scenarios of this ok. So, this probability value this value I have not put here, but we have computed it. So, then ultimately we found out that different scenarios what is going to happen. So, that is this one this event tree with reference to moisture in nitrogen line gas. So, similarly what are the other other initiative mechanism leakage calcium carbide magnesium in leakage pressurization induced drop oxygen in magnesium cell for all others similar event tree can be computed. And what we will find out that uh, considering all those things so, so, so ultimately the what will be the result result is this. So, these many accident scenarios or stakeholder concerns are identified low impact high impact like this and all those things ultimately uh, that uh, from initiating event point of view these three leads to process shutdown. These two hazard or initiating mechanism lead to emission, these two low impact fire, this one lead to bursting, these three hazard lead to high impact fire. Okay. So, my moisture in nitrogen gas line leads to high impact fire. Similarly, moisture ok. So, that means, you have accident scenarios and you have initiating mechanisms or as such hazard, hazard element and initiating mechanism combined is the hazard we are writing. And here what happened the initiating mechanism why this pressurization of I D will take place, leakage will take place, you can develop fault tree and find out the root causes ok. So, now what do you want? We want to see that how this hazard, uh, how hazard control hierarchy will be used. What is this? This is accident scenario. Now, let us go to the next importance measures. Sorry, sorry. Once you know the scenarios, importance means what? Risk. So, let us compute risk. We have seen that from event tree, you have computed the risk. Risk is probability of that scenario times loss. I have I have given you the loss calculation part, consequence modeling. So, what are the different kind of losses that you require to calculate? That you calculate and in monetary term it is possible or in some index value you create and then once you multiplied with the probability of that scenario occurring times the loss you will get the risk. So, we have we, we have seen the risk value here. Now, <clears throat> then what we said that you just compare your risk value with the benchmark. We did not get any benchmark uh, such system, but the, hypothetically we have created two bench uh, to two another similar system and then we compare this is this is our system vis a vis, a, vis, a vis the uh, comparable system. Then we found out that from the 1 is most severe and 5 is less severe in terms of risk. So, that means from this scenario point of view you are doing fine, others are also doing fine. This scenario point of view you are best, this scenario point of view all are equally worst and this scenario point of view DSU 2 is the best and this scenario point of view DS 3 is the best. So, that means what DS 2 and 3 is doing with reference to this and this if you know then you will be in a better position to reduce the risk. Okay. So, process shutdown risk can be reduced up to the risk of this unit, high impact fire can be reduced up to this unit, this is one comparison. But you may go for LF principle also and then you check that with reference to all those accident scenarios, what is the status? They are in LRP, LRP, LRP and acceptable and this LRP. LR means the toler LRP or tolerable region. Okay. So, if we consider that this risk is equivalent to fatality risk, then using the Dutch criteria, we can use this if it is 10 to the power less than 10 to the power minus 4, it is acceptable, which is this. If it is 
uh, sorry if it is less than 10 to the power minus 7 acceptable this is acceptable one but if it is if it is 10 to the power 4 or more this is intolerable no one is there but most of the things are fall, falling under LRP that is why LRP, 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 LRP. So, you want to reduce this risk ok this is the principle. So, you have hazard find out the accident scenarios through the methods what we have already considered then accident scenario risk you understand and then you say that what are the risks that are acceptable, what are not acceptable, what are in the alert zone and then you want to reduce this ok. So, now use the hazard control hierarchy principles. So, all those 9 principles I have already discussed P 1 to P 9, I do not want to discuss it now, you know this. Then what happened with in the L in the there in the L alert zone kind of things. So, there will be different strategies designed for minimum risk incorporate safety devices, provide warning devices, SOP institute training, this 9 principles we have mapped here. So, that means, what you will do depending on your strategy, what are the principles you will be using. So, okay. so what I, I suggest you here, it is clearly written what is to be done. So, you, you in the video, you make a have a pause for the video and first note down this and then understand and use it. Now, come to the deployment matrix which I want to explain it because this is important. So, maybe next 15 minutes time we will spend on uh, this deployment and other slides. Okay. So, what you have known so far? You have shown that there are initiating mechanism or hazard. So, this side we are using interchangeably this, but actually it is basically hazard which ultimately lead to the initiate uh, that initiating event. So, there are suppose a kind of different kind of different types of hazards or different hazards. Then what happened? We have already seen the hazard control hierarchy with with 9 principles, these are design principles from hazard control hierarchy. So, first you map these two that the hazard with hazard control hierarchy, what are the mapping? How many with reference to a one hazard? which of the principles that can be applied ok. And then there will be another another axis known as design solution. Once you have hazard wise principle mapping, then based on your design knowledge, hazard knowledge and your lessons learned, then you will be able to find out some of the design solutions. So, what is the first level mapping? First level mapping is hazard versus design principle which is basically 9 principles of hazard control hierarchy ok. So, let us now see this that in order to see this let me take a cross section a a cross section and how it, it, it will look like it will be something like this ok. So, here in this particular slide for H 1 D P 1 D P 7 like this it is these are applicable. So, that means, D P 1 and D P 7 related design solutions will be there. If you take cross section, you are getting that this slide that means, they for this is my hazard a particular hazard may be H 1 may be H 5 whatever may be. And then you see you have seen that D P 1 and D P 2. So, what I, I want basically here what we want basically here you write hazard 1 to hazard 2 to hazard h ok. So, that will be better. So, then hazard 1 these many principles are applicable you may get you get d s also in the other other cross section not problem not issue. So, hazard these two second one these two third one may be this. So, that means, you know what are the principles that will be applicable for the different hazards obviously, you have the system and design knowledge otherwise you cannot do it. Okay. So, with reference to our example that de, uh, desulphurization unit, now let us see that we have 6 different hazards, then a group of 5 engineers who are basically having knowledge of this 
desulfurization plant they have the and for the existing plant they have developed it that with reference to moisture in nitrogen line gas they found out that this dp1 that avoid hazard not it is not possible for any of the hazards so this is totally ruled out but for first one dp2 dp3 and dp4 principle 2 principle 3 and principle 4 are applicable for the second one p2 p principle 2 3 and principle 5 is applicable for the third one p2 p3 as well as p5 is applicable for the fourth one i think only dp6 is applicable for the fifth one dp4 is possible for the sixth one again that means the first one 1 2 3 that formation uh, h6 that is p2 p3 these principles are possible then that team also found out that pressurization of id design solution is not required as it is acceptable probability is very low acceptable limit so this is not required nothing is required for this then design solution for h6 and h1 are similar based on your expert knowledge what happened you found out that based on your expert knowledge found out that h1 and h6 for these two hazards the solutions are similar here these three principles applicable and these three principle applicable at the same way from design knowledge they found that the similar design solution will will help in 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 fighting against these two initiating event or hazards ok similarly h2 and h3 they are also same so h2 h3 they are also same and h5 oxygen in magnesium silo the probability value is also very very low ok so that essentially that means h1 h2 h3 and h6 these are the hazards or the initiating event whatever way you can but uh, initiating mechanism but for the time we are always using hazard or initiating mechanism so let it be uh, because from event tree point of view initiating mechanism from the hazard triangle point of view is the hazard ok and in between the transition from one to another and as well as basically their nomenclature terminology you also know so i do not think that it will create any confusion to you so what you will, you will do now you have to find out the solutions with reference to these so how do you do you see the deployment moisture in nitrogen gas what are the things about the hazard not possible we say dp2 dp3 dp4 available others are not applicable the expert team found out that in order to do use use this principle but if we use this principle what are the intervention that can be put if you use this principle what are the interventions that can be put if you use this principle what are the interventions that can be put now moisture analyzer it is already there so please please see the for the existing system these things are to be put means because of your expert knowledge or design knowledge process knowledge you have now with this approach you are able to find out the solutions so that is the that is the issue that is what is basically we are saying the deployment you have hazard knowledge you have design knowledge you have system knowledge you have operation knowledge you have the team so and you have you have we have given the total path and now you are in a position to deploy it so it is so for hazard one this is now in the same manner if you do for hazard two you are finding out some more if you go for similarly hazard 3 and like this and finally what happened you have you have got so many for hazard 1 and 6 hazard 2 and 3 so there are five solutions moisture control provision of heating arrangement provision of separate argon line complete shift co2 shoe analyzer stop operation and here also there are another five okay so that means with reference to this desulfurization plant the team the team we are we, if we assume that they they are expert really then that is this is the good solution if really they are not expert enough 
definitely the solution is inferior. So, you should not rely on this solution. What is important here is that how to use SFD to ultimately reaching to design inter or redesign interventions which we are talking about design solution. So, that is why I have written here the DSS presented are possible solution not verified by expert designer and hence may not be relied upon. Further any new DS may bring new hazards and hence be careful in implementing it. The step 10 step the step 10 of SFD is therefore, very the step 10 is 10 step is very very crucial. Okay. So, I I have gone very quickly and and the, the reason is very obvious because most of the things are known to you and I have just given you uh, one after another in a systematic manner. So, that you will be able to map hazard to design solution and you will come out of few design solutions which can be implemented at the at the system level, soft floor level and that is what is the purpose of this very very um, important codes industrial safety in engineering. And I, I we are really thankful to the five member team actually they were the participants in one of the training program on industrial safety engineering that is what I have uh, organized with help of my colleagues. Okay. So, if you like this lecture I will be extremely happy because this is a concept what uh, what we have developed and I, I, I want all of you should apply this whenever uh, if you have this opportunity to apply and, and if you find uh, problem in understanding that how SFD to be applied then definitely you can write to me or you can uh, write in the discussion forum definitely it will give you uh, much needed uh, that means much needed uh, a tool that uh, that is required for you to uh, actually do uh, prevention through design in the plan so but this is one of the concepts only please don't uh, think that this is the concept for uh, finding out the design solution for safety uh, related to safety and we have already seen bow tie and the safety barriers that is also and that can be also uh, uh, used and uh, can be done similarly there may be others like your there is axiomatic design, design for AX, so many uh, different concepts are available, trees is another concept that is also available. So, okay, there are multiple uh, many concepts available, so uh, you can use them, but this concept what SFD I talk about it is it is it is in line with the quality function deployment, because in quality function deployment our objective is design quality into the product. In safety function deployment, our objective is design safety into the system or, or facility you are going to develop. Thank you very much.